Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. Today we're going to talk about doing bruised, diseased flesh. That's right, Nurgle's in the air and it's time for some more rotten flesh. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get into the technique and learn it Vinci V style. So let's talk about diseased flesh. The key with doing a diseased flesh color is to take whatever your normal flesh tones are, these could be darker skin tones or lighter skin tones, and introduce those colors that we think are perhaps sickly. And for our case today, that's going to be green and yellow. But keep in mind, blue can be more bruised, as can purple. Purple can also feel rotten. You can have deep reds because it looks like too much blood is in there. There's lots of different choices. But to integrate that color throughout all of your work. So as you see me applying the first base coats here, I want to talk about technique and color choice. Now, the specific colors are up on the screen, and there's nothing magical about these specific colors. You could use any tones you want. But in each case, what I've done is taken the base tone, whatever I would normally use for the skin tone in this case, and added in the green tone for the shadow colors and the mid-tones and the yellow for the highlights, making things appear more jaundiced, more sickly, more off. There's something wrong. Now, in addition, you'll notice that I'm not painting in traditional layers. One of the other ways we can communicate diseased skin is not simply by the color choices, but also by the paint application. We can use the application to our advantage. So in this case, you notice I was often stippling, stabbing, making sure that the paint had a rough texture to it, which is unusual for skin and will read as diseased. Now, we can also play with the feeling of disease by playing with the slight filters and tones. So here I have a goblin green glaze. It is extremely thin, really a filter, and you'll notice whenever I see any kind of pooling, I'm going to go back and sop that up. We don't want to actually leave any green pools. We just want a slight tint of green, and there you can see as it's dry what it looks like. Now I chose to do it there because I only wanted to tint green the mid-tones and the shadows. As I move into the higher tones, I want to bring it into the jaundiced yellow. So yet again, not only is it the color choices, not only is it the method of application in the rough stippling, but it can also be in the way we apply the paint. By turning my mid-tones and low tones green, and then separately turning all of my high tones and highlights and high value jumps deep into the yellow spectrum. And yet again, I've just taken my uh, highlight flesh tones that I would normally be using for this project and I've integrated in the yellow. So that cold yellow. And I did pick cold yellow intentionally. Cold yellow, and it, it absolutely, you can absolutely have yellow that is a cold tone is a great counterbalance to the warm greens, cold highlights, warm shadows, which also feels weird. Once I have the skin toned down in that way and it feels sick and jaundiced, the next step is to get all of these buboes. Now, buboes and actual visible disease is really fun, honestly, to paint. And you need to start by separating them out from the skin. So I dabbed on the highlight colors to effectively get the raised area a different color. And what I'm going to then do is slowly build up and integrate these into the skin tone through these, the, making these boils feel different. Now, because green and yellow were the base of my skin tone, we want to make sure that the buboes and the sickness, the disease, stands out. If you go check out the Baron Harkonnen from the original 1984 Dune movie, that's going to be a really good example of really disgusting buboes in action and some A-plus makeup work. So, you know, check that out if you ever want a visual example. It'll save you from having to Google this, which is a nightmare experience. I'm also working some, some slight purple tones into the deepest shadows. I'm not covering all of the green. I'm just turning the deepest shadows purple to push the idea of sickness more. 
And you'll notice with the buboes, I do a white dot of a fairly large area, then glaze it, then do a smaller white dot. And then what I'm going to do here is glaze it again and repeat. I'm doing this to build up these very subtle color transitions. So as I move here into the more red tone, I want the purple to be in the skin and fade out with a very, 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 very thin glaze filter. As we get more into the raised, swollen part, I want the red to intensify, hence getting out this magenta color. Yet again, I'm going to go ahead and get out the white and reinstantiate the very tippy tips of the buboes as I build all of these up. And that gives this natural transition bruised sickened flesh swells and as it distorts and distends the underlying skin it slowly changes color into something grotesque and horrific and this is how we match that i want to jump in here and say the specific colors i'm using are certainly not the limit of what bruised flesh can look like so although you see me using these purples and magentas and yellows mainly because of these pustules and boils and this diseased flesh you can integrate a lot of different tones into bruised flesh so it can be deep blues it can be greens rotten flesh turns a lot of horrible nasty colors so don't hesitate to experiment the key is to thin those paints down into that glaze whatever color it is and then lay that over the skin tone so it's looking slightly off. Just as you see me doing here, integrating those slight tones of green and then build them up. That's what gives the impression that it's still flesh, but there's something very wrong. As we continue building the buboes, we need to make them feel sick. And so here we're taking a very thin cold yellow glaze and I'm actually running it over everything, both the bubo, the surrounding swollen tissue and the the normal skin now why am i doing this well one because this glaze is going to help tie everything together it's going to soften the magenta and integrate it in with the jaundice skin but two because the yellow swollen bubo will feel more sick gross and disgusting and it will then help stand out when we come in here and take our deck tan or white or whatever and we make very tiny little itty bitty dots at the very top of this so again we've really gotten that whole pus filled raised uh diseased area of the skin up and standing out from what's around it now begins the period of general futzing, which is how I end all of my models. And in this stage, what I'm looking to do is correct things here and there that didn't quite work, because when you're doing this rough patchwork thing and you have this very diseased skin, that you might not always get exactly the result you want. So I'm doing things like smoothing the edge of the violet glaze down into the skin to make it look like the bruised, uh, the bruised swollen flesh truly just disappears organically. I am smoothing out some of the blends where the different glazes didn't quite or had a bit of a too hard of a line. Uh, if I feel like the some of the areas need to be a little more swollen, I'll build that up, building a little more green in. Effectively, this is just that wonderful, magical last step of working your way around the figure and generally futzing with it. But remember the keys. Rough application. The color choice of integrating those sickened green and yellows or whatever your color choices are into the skin and then the order of application to make the value contrast and contrast of hue pop out. All right, so there we go. That's the finished flesh, at least on the Sorcerer. Now, of course, I did finish him up using a lot of techniques you'll see in other videos. As a matter of fact, his robe was done using one of the same techniques that I talked about in a previous video. That's linked up top. So you can always find resources for everything I did on this mini in the playlist where this video is in Hobby Cheating. But as always, I hope you liked this. There's going to be some shots of the final model coming up. If you've got any questions I didn't answer, drop them down in the comments. I always love to see those and I answer every question. Subscribe if you haven't already. But as always, I thank you very much for watching this one and we'll see you next time.